we have got full bit x squared minus 4x minus 20. Hey Squee, hi I'm Maths 2022, people one, question one. Have a look at the question, read it, maybe try it yourself. And let's go through official marks that we A Squee gave. So it says determine the equation of a line perpendicular to 5x plus 2y equals 7, passing through the point minus 1, 6. So we've got 5x plus 2y equals 7, so we need to work out the gradient or state the gradient of that line. So I will do some work for that. We've got 2y equals minus 5x plus 7. So y equals minus 5 over 2x plus 7. So the gradient of this line is minus 5 over 2. And you get a mark for working that out. So there's your first mark there. And for your second mark, you, and you get a mark for using perpendicular gradients. So if you say the gradient of the perpendicular equals 2 over 5 because of negative reciprocals. M1 times M2 equals minus 1, remember. For this paper, you didn't have to state that M1 times M2 equals minus 1, but let's just put that at the side because most of the time you'd probably say that just to be on the safe side. And for your final mark, we have to work out the equation of the line. So we're going to use y minus b equals mx minus a for that. Or any other method, y equals mx plus c would also work. So if I call that a and b, and I've got y minus b equals mx minus a. So I've got y minus 6 equals 2 over 5x minus minus 1. There's my working so far for there. Eliminating the fractions by times and by 5, we've got 5y minus 6 equals 2x plus 1. And expanding our brackets, so we get 5y minus 30 equals 2x plus 2. And then we can leave it in any form we want as long as it's tidied up and simplified. So in the official mark scheme, the S we left it as 5y equals 2x, and then moved the 30 to the other side, added 30 to get plus 32. And that was your final mark there. But you could have left it in any form you wanted to, so you've, as, as long as it's a reasonably simplified form, you could have minus 2x plus 5y equals 32 would be an option. You could multiply, divide through by 5 to get y equals 2 over 5x plus 32 over 5. Just double checking that that's a simplified fraction, and it is. But that's as far as you needed to go to get your, your final mark. Hey, Hi, I'm Avs 2022, paper 1, question 2. Evaluate 2 log 3x minus log 3. Four. So it's just it's a three mark question, this one. The first one we're going to apply is the idea that 2 log 3, 6 can be simplified to log 3, 6 squared. So you get your first mark for simplifying this first log to log base 3 of 6 squared. And we can still write minus log base 3 of 4. As long as you wrote this, there's your first mark there. And then our second mark for combining the takeaways into one log as a divide. In other words, log base 3 of 6 squared over 4. There's our second mark there. Let's just take a note of that. And of course, our third mark for then evaluating what that is. So working it out. So let's do some work on that. Log base 3. 36 over 4 equals log base 3 of 9. Well, 3 squared is 9, so log base 3 of 9 equals 2. And there is our final mark right at the end for getting 2. Just a little note on this. If you did the correct answer but did no working on this question, you would get no marks. You have to show 
your steps to show that you understood it, otherwise yes, you just think you were guessing on this question. SQA higher maths 2022 paper one question three was a function h is defined as h of x equals four plus a third of x where x is a member of real numbers and find the inverse function h of to a negative one x and this is worth three marks. This one is a couple of methods you could use so I'll go through both methods in case you used an alternative method or prefer an alternative method. So let's look at method one. Let's call it here method one. For method one to get your first mark, you would say that h of the inverse function of x equals x. You can get a mark for knowing that if you take h of the inverse, you always, the composite function, you always get the answer x. So there's one mark there just for writing that down. Then for your second mark, substituting into h, you'll get 4 plus 1 third h to the minus 1 of x, and that still equals x. So there's your second mark if you're using composite functions. And then for your third mark, the inverse function, the subject of that. So we'll need to do some work on that, first of all. So we've got one third of the inverse function equals x, take away 4, times in 3 by 3 then, the inverse function equals 3 times the whole of x minus 4. And we can leave it in that form to get your final mark, or you could have went on and expanded the brackets, there's nothing to do that. So there's your first method. And let's go through method 2 for the same question. Okay, so method 2 is much more common I've seen in the high schools use, is where you say that y equals h of x. And that implies that x equals the inverse function of y. In other words, writing y equals the inverse the function, if you make x a subject, that gives you the inverse function, okay? So we have got y equals 4 plus a third x in this case, and then we would get a mark for starting to rearrange this. So you could get a mark for doing y minus 4 equals a third x, that's a mark there. Or alternatively, if you prefer to multiply 3 by 3 first, or you could have 3y equals 12 plus x. If that's the way you prefer to go, I would do it the first way, but that's the alternative way. Continuing on with the way that I've done it, that's your first mark, then expressing x, making x a subject. So from here, we're going to times through by 3. So we've got 3y minus 4 equals x, or x equals 3y minus 4. There's your second mark there. And then you have to explicitly state what the inverse function is to get your final mark. So you have to then say that your inverse function of y is equal to 3y minus 4. And so, for your final mark, your inverse function of x must be 3, x minus 4. And there's our final mark there. Now, just a little notes on like, where would the SQA say you can't get marks? Let's look at method 2 to start with since we're on it. We can start off just by writing this and you will get your first mark. If you, don't, if, you ha if you forgot to write this, we would not take a mark off. Similarly, at mark 3, we would accept h inverse function of x is 3x to minus 4 without you writing this statement first. So if you just jump straight from here to here, that would be fine also. Also, what you would actually get a mark for if you had made a mistake is if you had kept it as y instead of x, we would, be, we would be quite happy with that and give you the mark anyway, the benefit of a doubt. What we would not allow you to get a mark for, to be very clear though, is if you look y equals 3 bracket x minus 4. You have to state it's an inverse function h minus 1. And if you had actually done all this for some reason and not shown any working, not sure why you'd do that, but if you did in this case, we would actually give you forget the free, give you a benefit of the doubt on this question. For method one, if you go four plus a third 
hates to mind. So if we just jump straight to here, we would give you both marks. We'd be fine with that as well. And of course, again, if you just jump straight to here and just got the answer, we'd give you all three marks. So there's your allocations of marks for this question. Method one and method two. 22, higher maths, paper one. Question four, y equals the square root of x cubed minus two x to the power minus one, where x is greater than zero. We have to differentiate this expression, so let's get ahead and do that. So our first step, or our first mark is to rewrite the square root of x cubed is x to the three halves. And we've still got minus two x to the minus one. If we've written that, we get a mark there for this x to the power of three halves. We now need to differentiate our terms. So our first mark is for differentiating our first term, which is 3 over 2. x take away 1 from 3 halves, and that's 1 half. There's a mark there. And then differentiating our second term. Minus times a minus is a plus, so it's plus 2x to the power of minus 2, taking away 1. So our final mark is one here and one for this term here. We do not have to go any further than that in this question. So if you did go further, that's fine, but you don't have to. 2022 Higher Maths Paper 1, question number five says, a line makes an angle of pi over three radians with the y-axis and passes through a point minus two zero as shown below. Determine the equation of the line for three marks. Okay, let's go through this then we have got our gradient is equal to tan theta. But our theta, remember, is not pi over 6 in this case. If I draw a line here, we need to take away from 90 or pi over 2. So a little bit of work if you need to at the side. We've got 90 degrees minus, well, pi over 3 is 180 divided by 3, which is 60 degrees. That leaves 30 degrees, which is in here or thinking of that in terms of radians, that's pi over 6. So if you're not sure what the tan of pi over 6 is or the tan of 30, you can use an exact value triangle. So there's one that I like to know. If we've got 60 down here and that's 30 up here, you think of this as being 2 and that's 1. And then using Pythagoras, 2 squared minus 1 squared is 3. So that's the square root of 3. We can clearly see the tan of 30 is 1 over root 3. So the tan of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. Okay. The first mark is for writing down that the gradient is equal to tan pi over 6. Not just tan theta, we need to write tan pi over 6. And then our second mark for working out what tan pi over 6 is, which is 1 over the root 3. We now need to work out the equation of our straight line. So we've got a point, A and B, so we can use Y minus B is MX minus A. Y minus 0, in this case, is equal to 1 over root 3, X minus minus 2. And we can tidy that up, Y equals 1 over root 3, X plus 2, multiplying through by the root 3, we get root 3 times y, or y root 3, equals x plus 2. And at that point, we would get our final mark. We wouldn't have to go any further than that. Or if you prefer, if you're just multiplied out the bracket, y equals 1 over root 3 times x, or x over root 3 plus 2 over root 3 would also be an acceptable answer. So there is our final mark at this point here, or alternatively there. A little note on where you would lose marks in this question. For question part one, if you go m is the inverse tan of pi over 6, tan to the minus 1, you would lose the mark. You have to write tan pi over 6, not ta inverse tan. Uh, but you still get part marks 2 or 3 if you went forward from there. To be very clear, to get your final marks on this, you really had to write m equals tan pi over 6 for your first mark. Work out that, which is 1 over root 3. If you had written 
m equals tan something else, you would lose that mark, but you could gain it at that point and then fall through. SQA, higher maths 2022, paper one, question six. Integrate between minus five and two, 10 minus three x to the power of minus a half dx. Okay, let's start working on this. So we've got the integral of minus five and two of 10 minus three x to the power of minus a half dx. Well, we could start to integrate this by adding one to the power. So we've got 10 minus three x to the power of a half. They then need to divide by the bit inside the brackets differentiated. So inside the brackets is 10 minus 3x. If we differentiate that, you get minus 3. So we need to divide by minus 3, or in other words, that's the same as times it by minus a third. You get your first mark for just starting to do that, and you get your second mark for showing anywhere that you are going to be dividing by minus 3 or times and by minus a third. So there's your first two marks there. And then we need to process our limits. So we, let's tidy this up a little bit before we get to that. So we get 10 minus 3x to the power of a half. Dividing by a half is the same as times and by two. We've got a minus because of the times and by minus a third divided by three. Now, our limits are two and minus five. So we've got minus two, 10, times minus three to the times two to the power of a half divided by three. There's our first limit, and that is minus, minus two, 10, minus three times minus five to the power of a half divided by three. So there's our two limits because it's between minus five and two. So, your third mark is actually coming in at this point for substituting in 2 and minus 5 and putting the minus in between, you are getting that mark. So there's your third mark there. I mean, your final mark is for actually working that out. So let's work that out now. Just being very careful. So we've got minus 2, 10 minus 6 is 4. So it's times the square root of four, because to the power of a half is square root and divided by three, and that's minus, and then we've got minus two again, 10 minus three times minus five, well, that's minus three times minus five is 15, so that's 10 add 15, which is 25. So it's times the square root of 25 over three, Working out that, we get minus 2 times 2, which is minus 4 thirds, minus, minus 2 times 5, which is minus 10 thirds, minus 4 plus 10 is 6, so that's 6 thirds, which is equal to 2 in the end. So if you can get down to getting 2, there's your final mark there for working that out. Okay, let's go through some key points of where you could go wrong in this question. If you differentiated and didn't integrate, unfortunately, you get no marks at all, even if you're substituting numbers in. There's no way to get any marks for that. If you start to integrate individual terms, if we go back to the standard, the, the actual question, if you're trying to integrate, say, the 10 to get, like, 10x, and then the minus 3x to get something like minus 3 over 2x, you're just doing it inside the bracket, or you're trying to expand the bracket, you can't get any, any more marks after that as well, because it's just invalid, it doesn't work. For mark four down here, uh, it's only available for non-integer power. So in other words, if your power here, I've got a half as the correct answer, if you just squared or cubed or four, that we wouldn't get a mark, because we're checking if you can do the third part as well. SQE 2022 Higher Maths Paper 1, question seven. Triangles A, B, C, and A, D, E are both right angles. It tells us that angle B, A, C equals Q, and D, E, E, D, A, E equals R. As shown in the diagram, calculate sine R, sine Q. So we can pull some information out of this diagram by drawing some triangles. So let me draw the small one first. If I do a little sketch, we've got R here. This whole length here is 3. And the whole length from the top is 1. So by Pythagoras, 3 squared plus 1 squared 
equals 10, so that must be the square root of 10. We can do the same for the Q triangle, if I just do that at the side. If I call this Q, then on the hypotenuse we've got root 13, and on the bottom we've got 2, so by Pythagoras, root 13 squared minus 2 squared is 13 minus 4, which is 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. So nice and simple then, determine the value of sine r. Sine r, opposite of the hypotenuse, is 1 over root 10. And sine q, opposite of the hypotenuse, is 3 over root 13. Two marks there. One, two. Nothing else you're going to do there, so let's go to part B. Okay, let's determine the value of sine q minus r. Sine q minus r equals sine q cos r minus cos q sine r. From the start of the exam paper, you'll get that. So we need to work out our different things. So sine q is 3 over root 13. Well, cos r, well, we've already got r triangle here, so 3 over root 10. And minus cos q, which using this triangle is 2 over root 13. And we've got sine r, which we already know is 1 over root 10. Times in the tops of them, we get 9 over root 130 minus 2 over root 130, which is obviously 7 over square root of 130. Always double check if you can simplify that third at the end, but you can't, and you don't have to rationalise the denominator for the marks, because we're not examining that. So where do you get your marks for part B? If you go down sine Q cos R minus cos Q sine R, or you imply that by doing this, you get your marks. So there's mark 1 and 2. Substituting in, 3 over root 13, 3 over root 10, minus 2 over root 13, times 1 over root 10 is your second mark, and then your final mark, obviously, for working it out as 7 over root 130. So there's your final mark there. SQA, Higher Maths 2022, Paper 1, Question 8. Solve log base 6x plus log base 6x plus 5 equals 2, where x is greater than 0. So a couple of different methods you could have used here, so I'll go through the alternatives for you. Let's call this one method 1. And the first method is to combine the two logs, the plus is one single log. So we could write that as log base 6 of x times x plus 5 equals 2. And there's your first mark there. Okay, moving to the second mark, we can write that as... 6 squared equals x times x plus 5, or x times x plus 5 equals 6. So there's our second mark there. And then we can move on to try and solve that as a quadratic equation. So standard quadratic way, multiply the brackets, we get x squared plus 5x, and that equals 36. So, tidying that up, minus 36 equals 0. There's a third mark there for putting it in the proper quadratic form. And then our fourth mark, try to solve that. Double brackets, x and x. 9 and 4 times together to make 36, but take away make 5. So we've got plus 9, minus 4. So x equals 4, or x equals minus 9, but x has to be greater than 0, because it says so in the question, so we disregard one of the answers, so since x is greater than 0, x equals 4 is the only valid answer. And there is our final mark right there. 
We have to have stated that x equals 4. We disregarded the minus 9 to get that final mark. Let's look at method 2. So method 2 starts the same way. We apply the same rule as before. So we write log base 6 of x bracket x plus 5 equals 2. And we get our first mark. The log base 6 of x x plus 5 equals the log base 6 of 6 squared. Because remember, log base 6 of 6 is 1, so that is 2. And that would give us our second mark. And then we can cancel the logs from both sides to just write x, x plus 5 equals 6 squared, or x squared plus 5x equals 36. And it continues in the same way as the last method. Minus 36 is 0. There's our other mark, and then for our final mark, solving that equation, we get x and x, 9 and 4, plus 9 minus 4 equals 0, so x equals 4, or x equals minus 9, but since x is greater than 0, x equals 4 is the answer, and there's our final mark there, for 4 marks. 2022 paper 1 question 9 for higher math says solve the equation cos 2x is 5 cos x minus 3 for x between 0 and 360 but not including 360. So this is a standard trig equation question where we have to use a double angle formula so if we check the start of our exam paper cos 2x is 2 cos squared x minus 1 that's the one I'm going to use because the other side's got cos x on it as well. So changing that to 2 cos squared x minus 1 equals 5 cos x minus 3. And there we are, we get our first mark just for doing that. There we go, nice and easy that one for just using the correct one. And then we need to express it as a quadratic, we've got a cos a squared in it. So we've got 2 cos squared x degrees minus 5 cos x degrees. Minus 1, then add another 3, is plus 2. And that equals 0. So if we can get that far, there's our second mark there. And then we need to factorise it. So, double brackets. This is just like an x and an x, but except it's a cos x and a cos x. And we're going to have 2 cos x for one of them, because it's 2 cos x times cos x is 2 cos squared x. And it has to be 2 and 1. So you just have to work out which way it goes. Well, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So I can go 2 and 1 there. And then getting our signs around the right way. It's a positive at the end. So we either have to be both negative or both positive. And an easy way to work that out is the middle term is negative. So we're both negative. So there we are. We get a mark for working that out. Okay, let's look at our fourth mark. We need to solve our equations. So if we left the first one, we've got 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0. Or we've got cos x equals 2. Solving the left-hand side, cos x degrees equals 1 half. We've got cos x degrees equals a half, so we're going to have to work out um, x, so it's an exact value. So if you're not sure how you can do an exact value triangle, so if we had 60 degrees and 30 degrees, that would be 2, that would be 1, and that would be root 3. And you should be able to see that the cos of 60 is a half because it's adjacent of a hypotenuse. So x degrees equals inverse cos of a half, which is equal to 60 degrees. And because of cast diagram, we can say that we've got the first and fourth quadrant, so x degrees also equals 300. And there's our two solutions for the left-hand side. Now, looking at our right-hand side, nice and simple, cos x is equal to 2. There's no solutions to that, so we can just say there's no solutions because obviously cos x goes between 1 and minus 1. So for our final mark in this question, as long as we've got 60 and 300 and said no solutions, so all of this underlined stuff together gives us our final 
Fifth mark. 2022 high maths paper one question 10 had this diagram of a cubic function f of x and it had stationary points at 0, 3 and 4, 0 and with the sketch graph of 2 f of x and 1. So what's it asking us here? It's asking us to scale it up by a factor of 2, so times by 2 and then move the graph up by one. So let's do that on a diagram. We have I've just drawn this very small here. You can't really see it, but that is the actual question. But it's just so that I can refer to it as we are going. So I've drawn myself a little uh, coordinate grid. And we can start off by looking at the points. So the first point we start off with is 0, 3. And we have got to times it by 2. So 0, 3 becomes... 3 times 2 is 6, but then we move it up by 1, so it becomes 7. So our first point is 0, 7. And we get a mark for that. And our second point is, we're times them by 2, but it's along 4 up 0, so 0 times 2 is still 0. But then we add 1, so it goes along 4 up 1, so we can note that point is 4, 1. And the shape of the graph is exactly the same as it was before. So we just carefully draw a nice curve turning here. And we can even label it y equals 2f of x plus 1. So our marks for this, you get one mark for a vertical scaling of a factor of 2, which you can see from the graph. By that, we can see that you've done, you've times by 2 somehow. You get another mark for adding one, so we can see you've moved up by one. You're getting this from the turning points, really. And then transformations applied in the correct order. So that's the final mark for doing it completely correctly, essentially, because you could have thought, well, we need to add one first, then times by two. Now, if you had done that, four zero would become four one, which would become four two. You would still get a mark for doing both of those things with four two. Similarly, zero. 3 would become 0, 4, which would become 0, 8. It would be obvious you had added 1 in times by 2, but in the wrong order, so you get 2 out of 3 in that case. Part B says, state the coordinates of the stationary points of the graph at y equals a half x. So let's start off with the original graph again. So we're saying that x is being halved, so what does that mean? It means that we can work out that 0, 3 would turn into 0, 3 still, because of half of 0 or doubling 0 still gives you 0. So 0, 3 is still 0, 3. That makes no difference. Now the only thing that's changing is the x. This one was 4, 0, but I want it to be 4, so if I double 4, I get 8, because a half of 8 is 4. So it must be 8, 0 as well. And you just get a mark for actually working that out with no real working required there, just for stating it. 2022 higher maths paper 1 question 11 was express 2x squared plus 12x plus 23 in the form p x plus q squared plus r. So in other words, the higher maths complete the square question. So there's a couple of ways to do this. Let's go for the most common way. Um, you've got 2x squared plus 12x plus 23. You want a p, so you're going to have to take 2 out as a common factor between the first two terms. So you could write 2 bracket x squared plus 6x, and then you've still got your plus 23 on the end. And that would be a mark for that. Okay, your second mark, completing the square on this. We have to know that we then do two bracket, half the middle term, so x plus 3 squared. And then we need to, that's all in big brackets, of course, we need to immediately take away 3 squared. We've still got plus 23. So, if you had got this part here, if you'd written x plus 3 squared times 2, you would have got a mark there. We've got 2 x plus 3 squared minus 9 plus 23. So that's 2 x plus 3 squared, 2 times 9 is 18, so minus 18 plus 23, which gives us a final answer of 2x plus 3 squared, 23 take away 18 is 5, so plus 5. So if you can get your final mark by following your working through, you get your final answer there. So that's method 1, that's one way to do it. Okay, another optional method that you could use for this, but not often I've seen taught, 
is to start from this point and expand it and then equate the terms. I'll show you that method now. So if I've got px plus q squared, that's p times x squared plus 2qx plus q squared, and that is now plus r. Following that through a little bit, I get px squared plus 2pqx plus pq squared plus r. If you got that far, you get a mark at this stage for that for this method and then equating the terms. So this obviously equals 2x squared plus 12x plus 23. So we should be able to see that the only the coefficient of x squared here is 2 and the coefficient of x squared here is p. So p is obviously equal to 2. We can see right here that p immediately equals 2. And similarly, the coefficient of x in the first is 2pq, and that equals 12, but we can immediately work out since p is 2, that means that 4q equals 12, and q equals 3. And finally, we can see that pq squared r is the constant, plus r, sorry, equals 23, but we already know that p is 2 and q is 3, so substituting that in, we get 2 times 9, which is 18, plus r equals 23, so r equals 5 in this case. If you've got pq equals 2, 2pq two equals 12, and pq squared r plus r equals 23, if you had written down those equations, you would have got a mark. So we should have written all of them, the top lines, and then working all of them out and writing it in completed square form gets you your final mark. So you can't just work them all out. You have to then say what the answer actually is, which is 2x plus 3 squared, because q is 3, plus your 5, because r is 5, for your final mark. And there's your three marks in that way. 2022 Higher Maths Paper 1 Question 12 was given f of x is 4 sine 3x minus pi over 3, evaluate f dash pi over 6, or f dash differentiate your function at pi over 6. So, f dash x, we can check the front of the exam paper to realise that sine becomes cos when you differentiate it. So you should first of all start by writing 4 cos, 3x minus pi over 3. And just for doing that part without actually finishing the differentiation, which I'm going to do in a moment, gets you your first mark. For your second mark, you have to then realise that this is the chain rule. So you've got an inner function of 3x minus pi over 3. So you need to differentiate that and times the whole thing by that. So in other words, if I differentiate this part, that's the constant, so that's nothing. Differentiate 3x is 3, so I need to times by 3. So we get a second mark for realising that and writing down it, we're going to times by 3. And then our final mark, of course, is evaluating it. So I need to tidy it up and then substitute pi over 6 in. So f dash x equals 12 cos 3x minus pi over 3. So f dash of pi over 6. And this is an exact value, remember, because we are non calculator. But I'll substitute it in first. 12 cos 3 pi over 6 minus pi over 3. We need to tidy that up. So that's 12 cos 3 pi over 6 minus 2 pi over 6, which is 12 cos 3 minus 2 is 1, so it's just pi over 6. Pi over 6, if you prefer to think in degrees, is 180 divided by 6, which is 30 degrees. So it's the pi cos of 30. If you're not sure of what that is, let's draw an exact value triangle. If this was 60 degrees, that would be 30 degrees up here. This would be 2, this would be 1. 2 squared is 4, minus 1 squared is 1, so that gives you 3. So we get the root 3. 
and we're looking at the cos, so it's opposite adjacent over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. So you get 12 times the cos times root 3 over 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so you get 6 with root 3 as your final answer. And for all of that extra work, it's one extra mark. A bit stingy of the SQA there. So there's our, there's our final mark at this point here. Hi, SQA, higher maths, 2022 paper one, question 13, part A, show that x plus 2 is a factor of x cubed minus 2x squared minus 20x take away 24, part 2, then solve f of x equals 0, and then it shows you a graph of f of x, and it tells you that f of x minus k is k greater than 0, has a station point at 1, 0, you can state the value of k, we'll get to that in a bit, but let's start dealing with our showing the factor of a cubic. So, x plus 2 is a factor. There's two ways to do this. We could just substitute minus 2 into it, or we can use synthetic division with minus 2, whichever one you prefer. I will do the most common way that most people do it, which is synthetic division. So a reminder of how that works. We put minus 2 on the outside, and then the coefficients of our function. So 1x cubed minus 2x squared minus 20x minus 24. 1 just drops straight down, and we've got 1 times minus 2, which is minus 2, adding them together to get minus 4, minus 4 times 2 is 8, adding them together to get minus 12, minus 12 times minus 2 is 24, adding them together to get 0. And we get a mark at that point for using minus 2 in the synthetic division, so there's a mark. Let's move on to our second mark. So we need to complete the division and interpret the result. So we've completed the division, but we're not actually saying anything. We now need to say that since the remainder equals zero, that input, therefore, x plus two is a factor of f of x. And that gives us our second mark there for completing the division and also making our statement. If you had done it the other way by substituting minus 2 indirectly, then you would still get an answer of 0, but you would say that since f of minus 2 equals 0, x plus 2 is a factor. So it's the same way. Okay, let's move on to part 2. Hence or otherwise solve f of x equal to 0. Now, if you, this is where the power of synthetic division comes in. If you've already done synthetic division for part A, you already know this. If you haven't done it for part A, then you're going to have to divide through. But let's just assume that we're doing it this way. So for part 2, we have got this whole bit, x squared minus 4x minus 12, is our factor. So we now know that x plus 2 is a factor, so f of x equals x plus 2 times x squared minus 4x minus 12. And obviously, like I said in part 1, if you had just substituted minus 2 in, then you'd either have to do synthetic division at this stage, or alternatively, if you do polynomial division, if you know how to do that, you can do it that way. But assuming we've done this, we've got the quadratic factor, so we get a mark for stating this point here. That's our third mark. Then we need to solve it, so we make it equal to 0. So we've got x plus 2, x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. That's just staying where it is because we've already done that, but we need to factorise our quadratic. So we've got x and x, two numbers at times to make 12, but add or take away to make 4, it must be 6 and 2. And since our final result is negative, then one of them is negative and one is positive, just getting them right the right way around. We've got minus 6 plus 2 is minus 4, so that equals 0. If we get to that point, we get our two brackets, we get another mark there. Or alternatively, if you forgot how to factorise or couldn't do the factorising, if you had substituted into the quadratic formula correctly, which would be 4 plus or minus square root of minus 4 squared, take away 4 times 1 times minus 12, all over 2 times 1, 
you would get a mark instead for that. And then your final mark is just for working that out to get your factors. So we've now got x plus 2 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0, or x minus 6 equals 0. So x equals minus 2, or x equals minus 2, or x equals 6. So we get our final solution of minus 2 and 6 for our other remaining factors, because it was hence the otherwise so f of x equals 0. We've already got 1. So our other one for getting minus 2 and 6. And since it's a repeated factor, we could just say that x equals minus 2 or x equals 6, just to be clear. Minus 2 and 6 give you your final answer. Mark. The graph of f of x minus k has a stationary point at 1, 0. State the value of k. We know that this must be minus 2 because it's crossing the axis there. And this must be 6. Now, if this has a stationary point at 1, 0, that means that this must have shifted along to the number 1. So there's 1 there. It's shifted to the right by 3. And therefore, since it's shifted to the right by 3, k equals 3 because it's x minus k. So it's x minus 3. It's OK, it's 3. And we get a mark just for working that out. So there's our final mark for this question. SQA 2022 paper 1 question 14, the final one of the paper this one, and it was a circle question. It says circle 1 as equation x minus 7 squared plus y plus 5 squared and it equals 100. State the centre and radius of the circle and then hence or otherwise show that the point minus 2, 7 lies outside the circle. Part B is another circle with centre P and R. Determine the values where C1 and C2 have one point of intersection. So there's our formula sheet for circles that you didn't have to memorise, although you should probably know it by now. But it tells us the centres quite clearly. We've got 7 minus 5 as our centre for one mark. So for part A1, all we had to do was write down 7 minus 5. And that gives us a mark for our centre. And then remember, looking at the formula sheet, we can work out the radius because if it's in already factorised form, the right hand side equals r squared. So we can write down r squared equals 100, therefore r equals 10 because it's the square root of 100 for our second mark. Nice and nice to start off with there. So let's move on to part two of the question and zoom a little bit. Part 2 says, hence or otherwise show the point minus 2, 7 lies outside of cent circle centre 1. Well, we can just substitute point P into the circle and check does it actually equal 100 or not. So, part 2. So our P equals minus 2 and 7, which is our X and Y. So we've got for one mark, substituting that in, minus 2 take away 7 squared plus 7 plus 5 squared is minus 9 all squared plus 12 all squared. That's 81 plus 144, which equals 225. So that's our third mark or the first mark of part two for substituting in and working out it equals 225, we get a mark. Then we need to actually say what that means. So we can say that since 225 is bigger than 100, P must be outside the circle. Since 225 is bigger than 100, P lies outside the circle. And there we are for the next mark. So we've got four marks already. 11 part B says that C2 is a circle with centre P and radius R. Determine the values for which C1 and C2 have exactly one point of intersection. So you've got two options. If I draw a circle here, then we'll call this C2. And that centre is P, which if we remind ourselves was minus 2, 7. And then we've got our first circle, let's call it C1. And if we move that over so it's touching, the centre of that circle was 7 minus 5. 
So if we're touching at one point, we're just touching externally, so that the radius, this let's call it R1 plus R2, would be the distance between the circles. So R1 plus R2 would be the distances. Now we know that this radius for our first circle is already 10. We don't know the radius of our second circle, but we can work out the distance between the circles. So using the distance formula, R1 plus R2 equals x2 minus x1, 7 minus minus 2 is 9 squared, minus 5 minus 7, so plus 12 squared, 9 squared plus 12 squared is 225, which makes 15. The distance between the circles is 15. So that means the radius R1, in this case, would be 5, because 5 plus 10 is 15. So that's one option. Okay, so for the second option, we could have the two circles inside each other. And in that case, well, we already know that the radiuses together make 15. So the distance between these two circles is 15. But we already also know one other piece of information, that the radius of one of our circles is 10. And therefore, the radius of our other circle, 10 plus 15, is 25. R1 could be 25 for our second mark. So we get two marks, one for getting R1 equals to 5, and the other one for communicating that it must be 25.